Uh, but this case, Denise Beechel writes to me from Cudworth and Barnsley. And can I just read you the last line first? She writes, I hope you can help us, as we don't know what else we can do with her. Now, the her they're referring to is a golden cocker spaniel bitch, three years old, who's giving them big problems. She's apparently very moody, bites unpredictably. She's got mood swings, totally unpredictably. And she goes mad at the postman. It would seem that biting is the big problem. And that here yes. we have a dog that's potentially dangerous. Yes. Has, it, has she ever bitten you? Yes. Tell me about the time she bit you, what happened? Just a couple of months ago, I just went over to Stroker and just knit round and split my finger open down there. Did you think she was going to bite or was it? No. Just, just whoof, went to you. Just, she just changes. Just changed. She, she'll play Check lovely. Her and then next thing, she goes for you. Are you frightened or apprehensive when you take her out? I mean, suppose you meet people outside. Hey. Now, is that, is it, hey. would, you, would you expect her to do that? Yeah. We're strangers. Keep a, keep a grip, Steve. Keep, a, keep a grip. Keep a grip. Right, any trouble outside? If she's not on lead, she's OK. But there were one time when we were stood talking to friends and they'd got a daughter, a little girl, and I never thought anything about it, and she was going round back to her, and she nipped her. She, she went to yeah. bite the dog, and the she, dog went yeah. for her? You see, that is the big danger with a dog like this. I mean, if that happens to a child, it could be, well, highly dangerous for the child, and, of course, the dog would you generally end up being put to sleep. You know that's a fact, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Right, so mood swings, moody dog, bites, potentially a biter. Yeah. Yes. Anything she else? She doesn't like children at all. All children? All children. She doesn't like them at all. OK. Are you apprehensive of her, is the owner? Yeah. I am. So you never know how she's going to react? I wouldn't no. now Don't go you? to her. No. no. She'll bite me. Are you apprehensive? Or do, can yes. you handle her, do you think? Oh, I can handle her, but I watch myself. After she bit you, you're even yes. less sure of what she'll do. Yeah. Right. Does, this grumbling, I mean, that's a threat. That's a yes. threat. Does she bark and stuff like that as well? Is there a problem with barking? Yeah. It's stranger. She does high pitch barking. OK. It's so like a frightened barking, she does. Any other little problems? What about the postman coming? Because it's oh. a common one. <laughs> rips them up if she can get in. She rips the letters up? Mm. Yeah. So you she had... wants to get there yeah. first. Right. Apart from her being beautiful to look at, what are her good points? What do you find well, attractive about her? Well, she gives you lots of pleasure, yeah. because when she's not in the, the funny mood, she's a lovely dog. Right. She well, really I mean, is. So if she Even... comes up to you, how, how does she show that she's lovely? I mean, does she lick your hands or what? When yeah. she greets you when you're coming home from work yeah. and her back end, she just wiggles. Oh, the old sugar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> lovely to see that and she'll lick you to death. Yeah. You know, and you can touch her then. It's on her terms. So that's what you find most yeah. attractive about her. <laughs> <laughs> just as I speak. <laughs> can, I, can I just hey. ask you finally, how much does it disturb your life in general? I mean, does it make your life Unbearable, want, just bad. We want to love her. Right. And we can't get close to her. Hello, Steve. Nice to meet um, you. Megan. Megan around there. Around there. OK. Right. First thing I'm going to tell you is that this is very, very common. Very common. I think nervous aggression is the most common problem we deal with. That's the bad news. But the good news is it's very, very easy to cure. Because what we have here is a little dog that is decision making and getting it all wrong. Does she follow you everywhere when you go around yeah. the house? Yeah. yeah. She's looking after you. That's what the parent does. Why can't she do it? Because she's never been trained to do it. Who's taught her this job? Nobody. Problem number one. To be the leader, you must be the strongest, the fittest, the most intelligent and ex uh, most experienced in your, in your environment. She can't understand our world. I can't. So, so what chance does she stand? And to boot, she's a single parent. I should imagine you've been told to um, put her down, kill her. Yeah. Yeah. You've had advice to this yeah. dog should yeah. be destroyed. Yeah, as we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Give Take her a good home. Yeah. Take her in a garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, completely wrong because if you want to get aggression you give aggression mm. yeah. the dog fears what it doesn't understand and sadly human beings give dog signals that the dog does not understand so it is the language again we're back to the language problem being that the dog has a different language to you and I 
So, what we have to do is convince this little dog that it is not her job to look after you. That that is not what she's for. The idea that a dog only has one master is, is ludicrous. Because the dog sits into a pack, and that can be three individuals, it can be 30 individuals. And there's always somebody at the bottom, there's always stages. A dog must be below every member of the family, or else it will worry about you when you're out. Mm -hmm. What the dog is doing all the time is trying her best to protect you. And what do you do? You go out and leave her. Yeah. Yeah. Poor little soul's worried sick. You know, she's back here, where are my babies? And if she sees anybody coming at you, she's got to protect you. So we will, right now she's resting because as I've come in, I've come in and I've totally ignored her. I have not threatened her. And that has got to give her confidence. So it's all about giving her the confidence to give up the job, hand it over to you, and we go from there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When she growls, she is saying to people, keep away from my babies. I'm going to protect them at all cost. Mm -hmm. So she's not being naughty at all. She's doing the job you've given her. So she's not a bad dog. This is a confused dog, that's all. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do is when she growls at somebody, she must learn consequences of actions. I want you to just get up and walk away. <coughs> right, so the dog is growling now because she feels you're threatened. I'd like you just to get up and walk away from her. Just, just walk right away. Don't look at her. Just dismiss her and walk away. Okay. The reason I've asked you to do that is she believes that she is protecting you. In her mind, there's no doubt about that, she's protecting you. She's got to learn consequences of actions. If, when somebody comes in, she growls and carries on in that aggressive fashion, you abandon her. She will learn that you walk away. So therefore, what she's doing has no purpose. She's not achieving anything. She's not protecting you because you're not there. Yeah. So it will change her mind about what she's doing. Every time she does that, you'll go away and she'll stop doing it. She's stopped growling now. I'd like you to return to your seat. Without looking at her, without paying any attention to her at all, what you're proving to her is that your comings and goings as the leaders is, is okay. And if she were to start growling now, you just do the same all the time without acknowledging the dog. She will learn consequences of actions, which are, if she growls, she loses her contact with you. And because she's a pack animal, that's the last thing she wants. And eventually she will um, accept anybody that comes to the house because it's on your terms, your say-so, and she'll be contented. And you'll find she will put on weight. Be careful, <laughs> because the stress is off her. And you'll see the little personality blossom through. The real, real Meg will come through. Mm -hmm. and you won't recognise it's been the same dog in a matter of weeks. How do you feel? It's a lot better. We've not had anything like this, have we? No. She would have been growling and going for him. But what's she going to be like with children? That's a very good point, because what she's found confusing in adults is much more ex exaggerated with children, because they move quicker. So children will just become less confusing for her, as adults do. Mm. What I'd like you to do now, Steve, is to release the, cha the lead from her. Just take her off. Don't speak to her, just undo it. Right. The reason I want you to do that is that I feel confident enough that she has read our signals and understands them. So by giving her back the ability to run away if she wants to, which gives her more confidence, she's relaxed. The tension will go from the dog. So if you now continue this every time somebody comes, you ignore the whole situation. If she does growl, you get up and walk away. You show her what is the correct way to behave. Come on. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. You are. It's beautiful. You are. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. She's never let us do this. She's never let She's never, before. both of us. She's One at a time. She's never allowed you both never to struggle let, like no, this? No, never. So we've got the improvement. She's in we're this both as well. touching her together. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And we'll, we'll cry. <laughs> I can tell you now I'm as happy as you are. <laughs> Brilliant. What you've done is just lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>